The next little job, I've got the I've got the deed end plunger made. This locks into the gear, locks into the teeth of the gear. The next job is to machine the end of this to fit into the gear teeth. I could do it with a file, I could do it on a bench grinder. I'm going to do it on a milling machine because I've got a milling machine. I measure the angle between the two teeth. It appears to be 20 degrees, which is 10 degrees a side. So what I'll do, I'll machine a 20 degree taper on the end of there, a bit like a screwdriver blade, so it locks into, into the gear. Right, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grip the deed ends in my square, square collar chuck. I can machine one face, simply turn it over, bollocks, and machine the other face. And right, I've got my angle indicator on me, collar block, and you can see it's it's lying, it's kind of square, the little machine squared up, I squared it up on the floor when I set it up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to angle the collar holder in the vase. So we need to set what set this to ten degrees because that's half a twenty. And if we lift that up like that till the bubble's in the middle, that means that that shaft is at ten degrees. It's not super critical, like I see I could do it with a file or with a grinder. But well, I might as well play with the middle machine and get it somewhere near right. The other thing I need to do is, apart from the angle, because I can change the angle, I can set the angle up, <coughs> I need to put a stop on the, on the end of the block. Right, we've got a vice stop. Simply screw into there. It's fully adjustable. We'll just fetch it in so it's touching the, touching the base of the vice and the block, and we'll lock it up with that. Which means that it'll be in like that, and I turn it around like that, it'll just go hard against the stop, which will keep it in the same, the same position, so we've only got the angle to worry about. Put a little, a little nip on it. Edge. Lift it up, put it on the other way around, it probably work better. Lift it up until the bubble is in in the centre, which is there. Nip it up. So it's in the centre and it's touching, it's touching the stop. I'm just loosen this stop off and make sure it is. Yeah. So I bubbled in the centre. So that there was at an angle of 10 degrees. So we'll machine it flat on there, turn it over, do the other side, and hopefully that should fit into our gear. Turn the machine off. 
appears you to turn it off when you're starting to climb about the top of things. Right, so we need to turn it over on the vise. Loosen the vise off. Back in and nip on it. Once again, we've got a spirit level come protract around here. Bubble in the middle. You see, it's not mega critical, but it's going to get it. It's going to get it very near. So we're at the same angle. We're up against our stop again. Probably going to take this off in one cut. I'm going to make some, make some gentle with it. Screwdriver pound on it now. Make a look at this. So what we're going to do, we'll put it level in our vase. And now, drop the quill down a bit. I can ease away at the end of that until I get a nice fit on here. Right, I bought in that. With all those cheap lights from IKEA. Put it on here, that's absolutely great. See it's slack. So we do we'll take a bit off the end of it. Still a slot. Still a slot. That's nice. It's not quite going into the not quite going at the root of the gear. Not quite going right into the bottom of the gear, just stopping in the taper. Very pleased with that. What we'll do now, we'll harden it. We'll dress it up and then we'll harden it. Pleased with that. Nice. What did end is made from silver steel. Silver steel is easily hardened, easy to harden. Uh, you simply heat it up to a cherry red, about 800 degrees, at which stage it becomes non magnetic. Then you quench it in water, which makes it what they call glass hard, fully hard. That's actually brittle. Then you fetch it back to colour. The colour I'm looking for is a blue colour, 
the purpley blue colour which is a what they do is get our teeth and springs to so we'll heat it up we'll quench it in the water when you quench it in the water make it go straight into the water straight down and swirl it round put it in sideways there's always a risk of it bending straight in swirl it round right we'll warm it up this will be an ideal situation now when you're lighting a torch to have a cigarette it doesn't happen anymore I think I'll get enough heat up with this. It's lost its magnetic ability, it didn't, it didn't stick the magnet anymore. So now I know it's the right, the right temperature. Right, so now, now it's in a fully hardened state. Gonna fail. Turn that off. You hear it? The fail is just the fail just keeping on top of it. It's not it's not marking it at all. I took the cold glass hard. We'll polish it up. Way our wheels are ideal for this sort of job. Obviously safety glasses are a most for the way I wheel. And if I would wonder why I haven't got a rest though, you don't need a rest, but I don't need a rest for the way I wheel. If somebody gets a hold, it just gets dropped and goes underneath. If you've got a rest on, like on a grinder, it'll get jammed in there. We have wheels handy for knocking rags off. Put a polishing buff on the other side of it. Right, that's nice and shiny so we'll be able to see the, see the colours and we'll start to we'll put the scent on it. So we're going to heat this up till it goes a purple colour. I think it's 300 degrees what is the, um, the temperature we're looking at. And it'll go purple. Then we'll quench it back in the water. You can quench it in oil. <coughs> uh, what I'll do. This is actually designed to be quenched in water. You get some gauge plates uh, which is oil, oil hardening. You quench that in oil. Wheel oil, sperm oil, 1040 oil. I don't think as much what sort of oil you use. I'm just going to do it in the water. If I light the torch, I'll zoom the camera in so you can hopefully see the colours change on it. Right, we'll light the torch. We'll put our pliers at the ready, our water's at the ready. Much more gentle feeling this time, is not it? Want too much heat in it, we just want it to go a blue colour, like a perky blue colour. This will actually soften it, temper it. Makes not the best in here. But the very tip's gone blue. See the blue colour on the very tip? And the colour's starting to come down. Right, we're in the blue colour there. Once again, into the water. You can see the, you see the blue colour there, we've stopped it in blue. Now it's failable, it's hard but it is failable. That's how you harden silver steel. I've possibly gone a touch too hot, like maybe it's into a straw colour. 
what Fowler is going to do, it'll, it didn't need to be hardened, just I'm going to be made of silver steel, it is hardenable and I thought I might as well harden it. Right, we'll roughly assemble it and see, show you how it works. The spring goes on there, I need a stronger spring than that. That goes into there. There's a little, maybe a little knob goes on there, the pin. It's basically Right, basically it locks into your gear, so you can, you can count your, your teeth. Suppose you wanted to drill a hole every 10 teeth, you count 10 teeth, lock it in, then you, you lock, your, lock your spindle with that. Of course you can compound the gears to get basically any, any number of spacings you want. That fits in. Fits in nice, there's no, there's no play on it, no backlash on it at all. I think when you're doing your machine, you do lock your, that locks your spindle off. Right, when I've got the, me as well, I've got the camera running, there's one or two things I'd like to, I'd like to discuss and say. Uh, first of all, I'm a member of a, a couple of engineering forums, only two of them. Uh, one of them is called Metalwork and Fun, the other one's called Mad Modder. A full of lads, the same as me, who mess on with layers and milling machines, welders and grinders, various projects, well worth having a look. Just type in Metal Working Fun or type in Mad Modder, you'll, you'll, you'll find me there, you'll meet me there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was, somebody brought the subject up with videos, particularly my videos, in the use of bad language. I don't think the language is that bad. Uh, certainly, you can certainly hear a lot more before 9 o'clock on TV. Bastard's my favourite word, it's just the word I use. It's not even a swear word. Uh, once I used a real swear word, it was an outtake on the end of a video when I set the brush on fire, but there was a warning before that. If you use bad language on YouTube, they will stop you. Simple as that. So what I'd like you to do, if you, if you fancy, if you think the language is too bad, tell us and I'll moderate it. If you think it's alright, tell us now, keep going the way I'm going. I mean, to me, I, mean, I take the hobby very seriously. Engineering is a very serious subject. Safety wise, I'm always very, very safety conscious. But I do like to have a laugh. If I drop something, I'll say a bastard. The phone rings, I'll say a bollocks. That's just the way I am. <laughs>